Hello and thanks for joining me. This time we're going to talk a little bit more about asynchronous behavior in JavaScript, particularly asynchronous behavior inside of loops. So for example, we have an array here and it's an array of four elements, each element a string. And say we would like to do something with each element, maybe prepend another string and then push that new that new string that we've created to a new array. And we could use a method like the for each method in JavaScript. So first we can create a new array and leave it empty for now. And we can use the for each method. So we'll prepend the word add to each element. And then we'll push that to the new array. And when we log things to the console, what do we get? or when we attempt to log the, log the new array to the console. Well, we get what we'd hoped for. We get a new array where each element is the element of the original with the word add prepended to it. So that's simple enough, but what happens if you have asynchronous behavior inside of your loop? For example, imagine I have a function called delayed iterator, and to that function I pass an array, we'll call it x here. So as before, I create a new array, and then for that array x, I use the for each method, and I pass the elements, each element of the array, to a function called concatenator. And that function takes in that element, and it uses the set timeout function to after five or after half a second return the original element and the word add prepended to it. It comes out here and then we push that to the new array and then we attempt to log it to the console here. So let's say we pass the original array to our delayed iterator function and run our code. And for each element of our new array we have undefined. So that's no good. So we figure we have to handle this asynchronous behavior somehow. So as before, we use async and await. So for my callback function for the for each method, I use async and inside I use await. And remember what await does is it says to the rest of the code, don't do anything until this value is ready. Right? It's returned from this function. Okay, but if we're going to do that, then we need to use a promise up here. Right, and we can't use the word return, we have to use resolve in a promise. Okay, so hopefully this will work. Let's run our code. Okay, we see that new array is apparently empty whatever was happening up here and here didn't get pushed to the new array. All right, so let's make sure that this function concatenator is doing what it's supposed to and returning that here. All right, so what we can do is we can log values to the console and this time we'll log new elements, which is the return value, the original element with the word add prepended to it. And 
let's run our code. So we see that we are getting back from concatenator the values that we need. And we're logging them to the console here. So we expect that they're being pushed to the new array here. But unfortunately, we log new array to the console before these values can ever get pushed to new array. So somehow this for each function isn't working for us the way we had hoped. But what we can use is the for of method in JavaScript. So you can see here that things have changed. I'm not using for each, I'm using for of. And I introduce async and await the same way I did before. And I use a promise up here. Okay, so the code is almost the same except for the fact that we're using a for of loop. Let's run our code. Okay, after a fairly long delay of almost three seconds or a fairly long runtime of just over three seconds, we do get new array with the elements that we had hoped for inside of it. So I hope you can see that in some cases for of is going to be the better way to go and in the case where you, you introduce asynchronous behavior inside of your loop it may be the best way to go. So I hope that has given you even more clarity on async or asynchronous behavior in JavaScript and how to use async await and promises and I hope that it's also shown you that there's somewhat of a difference between well, there is a difference between for each and for of, and that maybe using for of is a little bit more intuitive. So anyway, thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon.